Okay, they want to show CC and Romeo. We got the homie Too Short. Now, I just saw this dude a couple weeks ago in Reno, and he shut it down. Like, dog, you never cease to amaze me, bro. Well, you know, um, uh, it's at this age, it, it, I'm, it's amazing to me that I'm still doing what I was doing when I was 14 years old, going yeah. to the house Crazy. parties and rapping at high school house parties and stuff, but... It's a job, man. It's like I, my hobby turned into a job. What can yeah. I say? But Look. you know what's crazy is like what you just said, like at this age. But we saw the Insta stories when you guys were in Reno, and it, yeah. it's like it's was it was popping. Like, like I mean, as if you were like a twenty-one year old on stage, yeah, still man. doing it, not missing a beat. The energy was just there. It's my job, but at the same time, you know, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I was fortunate enough to see like a. Uh, like James Brown later in his career, and it was a dope show. Like you know, you got to yeah. give it. I've seen P Problem in Funkadelic many times. I, I've been motivated by like, you know, Michael Jackson. Oh yeah. man! I mean, he was he was of, of age, and he was on that stage. Still doing it, still moving. I I like to um, tell younger artists like you know all, all the ageism stuff in hip hop right now, where yeah. the older artists are going, the new stuff is whack, which is not true, and then the younger artists are going, get your old ass out the way. It's it's kind of like you wish you could be an old rapper one day. Hmm. And get money like I'm getting it. Exactly. Yeah. And then the fact. OGs need to respect the, you know, the young craft. It's uh, it's getting money, so it's just doing the right yeah. thing. Yeah. I feel like um, if the OGs, ex you know, accept it, and they're starting to, a lot more are starting to embrace the younger artists mm -hmm. and work with them. And believe it or not, a lot of these younger artists, they have been sampling your guys's work. They've yeah. been watching you, so mm -hmm. they know what time it is. I mean, that's yeah. my personal opinion. I, I think that no matter how you feel about the music, if you were in the studio and watching them do their craft it's the same intricate process of making good music yeah. if, if hits rec if hit records were so easy to make we'd all be doing it right, yeah, right. all be doing it in a heartbeat right. and when i talked to the home has been in the game for a while their biggest issue in the beginning was the quick success mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying how the instant success like yo we had to struggle had to grind but that's each, the each generation gave the next generation something else to work Fact. with you know what yep. i'm saying when i when i came in it was just becoming a business mm -hmm. before right before i got in the game it was just just do it for fun yeah like all the hip-hop heads before me didn't really get that opportunity to go platinum and all that stuff but i came in after run dmc and russell simmons made it a platinum you know ll cool j they yep. made it platinum so yes. i came in on that and i got platinum so now we have rappers coming into a business mm -hmm. right and that's what this is all about it's all about being an entrepreneur and 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 when you get a hit record or when you have a company that's a production company you start making hit, hit records or you you know, you employ people. Yes, and it, it, the trickle down is, is an MF. But for yeah. me, I think it's hard, too, because when you have a hit record, you got to follow that up with another hit and yeah. another hit. You know what Which I'm saying? Which is something you've done. You could be a one-hit wonder and have a great two years. <laughs> yeah, but then that one-hit And then one 20 years later, you can go back on tour. Oh, my God. You guys <laughs> how many cool. happens? How, how many one-hit wonders have great stories to tell? They do. Yeah, you remember that do. one year we went on tour, boy? Oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> that but one see, year. But you got a story to tell because you turned what you love to do into a business. Now you're becoming a businessman. Man, let's talk about the move you're making now, Too Short. Well, you know, the state of California is, yep. um, is very, you know, big in the, the marijuana world. Mm -hmm. And um, we are totally legal now. Absolutely. We, we all know this. So, um, so, you know, I mean, a lot of people aren't in tune with, with like, you're here in California. And there's an industry that's, that's blowing up in your face. Yeah. And all the people that are getting involved in it, a lot of people aren't. And right. like literally, you like what I want to do in my life. Cannabis could be it. You never know. Never know. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I remember, and I, it's the the name has escaped me. But we interviewed um, a jeweler um, a few months back, and he was doing jewelry, making money. But now he's in the cannabis industry, and he's actually retired because he's like, believe it or not, I've made more money in one year mm -hmm. in the cannabis industry than all my years of being a jeweler. So, and yeah, it's crazy. You know, yeah, we got to motivate. We could get motivated because uh, it's a. Uh, it's very, 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 very corporate, but at the same time. Do you like that it's corporate? Personally, I'm going to get some money off that. Right, okay. <laughs> but at the same time, as a, as a smoker, mm -hmm. I, I really, I, I, the nostalgic days are just like, you know, riding with your little bag. And <laughs> right, <laughs> Little right. dime bag. Hum, 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 Humboldt County quality, you know, I mean, it was, you know. Yeah. But that's, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm really um, being a lifelong smoker. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm giving everybody time to go. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> they say it right now. Being a lifelong smoker, you know, I, as I get into the industry, I wanted to approach it on a quality level. Like I, I don't. I've never in my life smoked um, dirt weed or whatever you want to call right. it. Like mm -hmm. low quality. I've always smoked the best. So as I get into the industry, I'm dealing with the people. Who how have fun! How fun the was best. it testing out the two short sticks then? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Because you got to. It's your it's your I, name on it. You have to at some point. I brought you some prototypes, too. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> and I'm just doing it, you know what I mean, just because it's a job requirement That's at this it. point. That's it. That's why yeah, we're you know doing it. You know, we're required exactly. to do that. <laughs> so, but like, you, I'm on the outside looking mm-hmm. in too short, and I want to get into the business, okay? I'm mm-hmm. assuming you got to have money, but what are the other rules and regulations you got to go by? Do they do a background check? You know, oh, like, that's good. Well, I don't my approach to, to everything to is always before you get into something and you commit to it, do some research. Got just research. What do you, what part of it do you want to be? And you might not necessarily, it's so many avenues that you can get into. So it. many different levels you can get into. Yeah, it? I mean, okay. people, some people are dealing with edibles and they don't even touch like the, the flower, the actual buds and stuff. Yeah. Other people are growing. Other people are selling, you know, there's, there's so many things you could do. Uh, and, you know, the whole CBD thing. That's that's not what, even, I was just going to say that right now. It's yes. not even really about getting high. It's about healing and stuff. Like, it's a lot of stuff going on. So, mm-hmm. you know, you can pick an avenue. I like the whole CBD industry, too, because I feel like it's a it's a more holistic kind of way, in, yeah. in a sense. You know what I mean? Without all the pills and all the medicine. Um, so your two short sticks, where can they grab them at right now? We're launching right now, and they will be in select dispensaries, of course. But, you know, I'm, I'm California born and raised, so... Um, I was told as I was getting into this, a lot of names, celebrity type names have been attached to products, but then the, the c- certain celebrity might not have uh, tested that product themselves. And, you, you know, like maybe your name is on some 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 real not not good quality pre roll right. or some something. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> yeah. You know, the celebrity endorsement is not necessarily like, oh, the celebrity's name is on it. It's the good stuff. It's not necessarily that in the cannabis industry. So I'm trying to make sure my name in the state of California is always too short. Always, you know. I heard that. You You got to. When you hear too short, it's like too short on this song. You're like, probably going to be a good song. Yeah, for sure. We're going to hear a lot of bitches. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) It's probably going to be some good smoke if you're smoking the too short stick. Believe How about that? So, yo, I go back to the hood, man. Shout out to my people in St. Louis, man. They got so much love for you, by the way. Too short. What up, Big Joe? Um, <laughs> but, like, my block, like, they blaze it. They do that. So, I, I think how important is it for minority people to get involved in this industry? You know oh. what I'm saying? To have I'm just saying, don't, let it, don't let it pass you by. Got you. Just don't let it pass you by. It's a, it's a, a billion dollar industry that is growing as we speak in this state. Mm-hmm. And you sitting at home right now thinking about what you're going to do. Get involved. Exactly. Because I mean, I feel I feel maybe a, a, a different type of way because like you know we grew up we knew what that was you know people were smoking and now I feel like a lot of these business people that don't really smoke and don't dabble in that type of culture they they just know that the business side of it and they're mm-hmm. like we can make a lot so of money doing job. this yeah. yeah so you might as well jump so into if, it yourself if, if weed was like Walmart and every aisle was a different quality I'd I'd be on the the you know the upscale side of the story that's right <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about we're gonna have to move this to um man, congratulations. Yeah. Proud daddy. You did oh. that. Yes. You guys been on, on the blogs, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we sure have. We've I mean, seen I it. was I was really just, you know, I'm I'm not the kind of person who goes around like announcing things that go into my personal life. Right. But at some point in time or another, you know, it's gonna come out. Um the reason why I let the world know was because of what I'm doing with Ray J. We're doing this documentary about, you know, old ex Ex players with daughters, okay, living in the life. You know, he's he's, he's you seen his daughter. I saw yeah. his daughter yeah. is so cute. He brought her up yeah, here. I mean, she's yeah. so cute. Well, she she's like full yes. speed ahead. Oh my goodness, <laughs> a lot of energy. But um, yes, yeah, um, it's it's very challenging. Like what it was coming ahead of me. <laughs> we know yeah. when 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 I, we read it on the blogs and I found out. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, he's not a dad already. Like, no. I was tripping out. I was like, oh, no, I think he got to be well, that already, right? he died some things. Yeah, yeah like, I'm we stereotypically like, uh, seven baby mamas and eight kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. not facts. No. You know what I'm saying? And I got, hey, coming from that point of view, man, look, I, I was a player back in my days. I got a six-year-old now. Mm-hmm. But like, so, but when I had that kid, it was like a switch hit for me. Did that happen for you? Like, was there a moment where you were like, Shit got to change. Are you like, no, yeah, I can well, balance you know, it. I mean, having a daughter, it was, it's almost like what else would happen to me. Right. You know what I, mean? I was like, yeah. I, I heard that. I was Thank like, well, that's karma. So, <laughs> so these questions are coming at me sooner or later. They're coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I got to get, I got to be prepared. You know, I got to, yeah. I got to say the right thing and, and, you know, pass it on the right way. So, because what, what am I going to say to 
like, Daddy, why you always say bitch? <laughs> <laughs> why they say you a pimp, Daddy? <laughs> exactly. So I got to get ready for all that. I, You're going to have to. But um, my question is, I don't have any kids, so I'm just asking. You guys are both fathers. Like, the moment your baby's born and you hold the baby, mm-hmm. I mean, does it register in your head, Dad, or it has to grow on you? I think what hit me was just, and I've heard this long before it happened to me, but it's, you just instantly see you got a job. You got, you got to work. You got you got you're you're in charge. It's real, you, you, right? You have responsibility. You like you have to. There's nothing a baby can do without you. So, yeah, that's true. And no, my uncle I get told it. me they look at me and said, "Look, it's time to man up." Mm-hmm. But you I think I, you were man, my man parents up now. were very logical, educational kind of parents that were like teach, learn. You know, like like literally, like you know, be smart. Yeah, and not just. Book smart, but be common sense smart. Be smart. So I, I feel like that's what's in me. That's what I need to pass on is, is you know, just be smart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she isn't, she's too short be a, daughter. She ain't going to be, be no sucker. Yeah. Don't walk into a situation and everybody's in this room and you the punk. Don't be the punk. There you that, go. Hey, listen, there you I'm, go. I, my motto is learn to read the room. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> learn to read the damn room. <laughs> okay. So your so, daddy taught you good. That's right. For KDA Nation that may not know, let's go back. The first time you probably saw smoking with people in the industry, who were some of the names that you probably smoke with? Uh, my time. early my smoking partners? Yeah. I mean, well, this is we're talking hip hop now. This yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I've smoked with the best of the best. It's, I mean, Snoop Doggy Dog, uh, Naughty by Nature. Um, you know, Tupac, we all, we blew, we blew. Um, I smoked with Biggie. Wow. Shit, um, Pimp C, I smoked with the best of the best. Do you understand the name you dropping? I'm sitting right. here like, just the conversations y'all were having while y'all were doing it, you know what I mean? You know who I smoked with I was, that surprised me, but we, 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 we had a good time smoking, Jill Scott. Oh my God, mm. I love Jill Scott. Are you yeah. serious? Smoke some good weed too, yeah. Oh, okay. damn. Okay. All, right. All right, Jilly from Philly. All right, that's, cool. That's, that's what I call her, Jilly from Philly. Jilly wow. from Philly. Now, um, is it true the first time you smoke weed, you smoke with Tupac? Or is that a rumor? No, not the first time. Two, I, I was probably like a grown man by the time Tupac sm- okay, smoked for the first time. I mean, I'm just saying there was rumors that it was like the first time he did. And I'm like, let me go ahead and just clarify this. No, 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 no. But I bet no. Tupac didn't smoke no boo-boo, though. But Tupac and them, uh, it was Tupac, my boy Shorty B, Pee Wee, all the like digital underground crew. They they were the first people I seen smoke blunts. Like, I didn't, I didn't know what blunts were. I'm like, I like, I had to like. Get the wrap it in my head like you're gonna take a cigar, mm-hmm. dump all the tobacco out, and then put weed back in it. And they were like, "Yeah," I was like, "That's stupid." This just sound like a lot of extra work. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean, but was the payoff worth it though? Yeah, and you know what? I feel sorry for um. I ain't gonna say sorry. I feel bad for um, like backwood smokers. Cause wait, why? Cause how much does it cost you to smoke one backwood? I get it, but I mean, you get it already. It takes you yeah. forever to roll it up. You're doing all this breaking down, rolling. It's like when it gets past. Well, I heard ha- it tastes good. When it gets yeah. past halfway, it gets really harsh and soggy. You got wet it up a little bit. I don't know. I just heard. You know. And then and then you go around. Um, <laughs> you go like to Seven Eleven, and they sell you a, a bad bag, like a, a bag. And then you're a, mad. You open it. It's all hard. All dry. This is what I've seen See. other people. Then you're at the. St- yeah. <laughs> then you're at the studio, and like somebody goes, "Hey, roll one, smoke one, smoke one. Who got a wood? Who got a wood? Nobody got a wood." <laughs> You didn't smoke 20 woods and ain't nobody got a wood. And they're expensive as hell. I've seen people buy them. So so me, I get like a $2 pack of papers. Uh This lasts me like, I've I've smoked probably like 50 joints out of this or something. And I I hear those are the best. Those are best for you to the papers. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know though. No. Yeah. What's best for you is if you smoke a short stick. Okay, there you go. That part What's the process to smoke a too short stick? Well, you know, they're not like. Full size, they're like half size. Yeah. And the concept is that, uh, you know, you might not be in that whole, let's roll a blunt and smoke it in a circle and everybody hit it. You might just be like, I want this to myself. Right. Mm. And we all know that when you go to the dispensary and they give you those free pre-rolls, we never smoke them because they like garbage. And nine times out of ten, if somebody's at a weed event or something, you have the cannabis cup and they're passing out pre-rolls and you dare hit one, you're like, this is just garbage. Like, it's just yeah. flaky, shake. So, you know, I got with my guys at Green Holdings, and I'm like, if we're going to do this, let's do, I want a pre-roll that you take it out and you hit it, and you go, wow, this is good, tastes good. And and the real best part about it, it feels really good. Yeah, and you just feel happy, right? Because we use the White Angel. Oh, talk talk to us about the White yeah, Angel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> The holiness of it. Let's talk about that. Right, it's going to make you feel holy. That's, what, that's why it's so damn good. 
I just all I know is that when people smoke it, no matter how they smoke it, mm-hmm. they always come back and go, "I love this weed," like they just love it. I love it. That's why I picked the angel. How, how did it? How did um, the um, partnership with you and Green Holdings came about? How did it come about? Well, just doing my research and stuff. You know, it's just looking around, trying to figure out who, what, where, how can I get in. And mm-hmm. I came across them, and they were talking that quality, 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 quality. So, you know, I'm like, show me the quality. And they they came. I first, I went to them. Then they came to me, and we're like, each time it's like all these flavors and and different stuff. And like, which one you want? It was all good. It was hard, a hard decision to make. But the angel, we put it in the room. Right. And it always came back. The room always said the angel. The angel, yeah. And then we did like this little powwow one day. We brought a lot of experts over. The, uh, the angel, was, it was the winner, hands down, hands down, hands down. We had, like a, a, we had this little powwow with a bunch of experts. And it was overwhelmingly the choice. Experts that are like, hold on, let's smoke this really quick and see how this feels. Mm. That's a cool little job right there. I'm not mad at that. It was a cool. What do you call that kind of event? I don't even know what you call it. Like you like call. A, I don't know. Like what do you call it? Like just you guys getting together and. It was about probably like more than fifty people, and everybody in the room was an expert. Damn. And they're like analyzing, and it all came back. The angel. Oh wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're, gonna have, we're gonna have to. Uh, See somebody else smoking? Yeah, 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 yeah. We can, oh, you know, yeah. I, I exactly. could be the judge. I'd be on the side. There you line, go, you know exactly that I part. That, man. So you got a lot of things going on. You're still hitting the road. You got the short stick. Got the something. thing I'm doing with Ray J. I got a, um, a lot of young artists I'm working with right now, producers. I have a, um, a recording facility out here in L.A. Okay. Um, we make a lot of music. I actually, um, I don't really like bragging a lot, mm-hmm. but I'm supposed to be like too short, OG, whatever. I think I have maybe a hundred plus songs recorded that haven't been released, and I'm, all them all, they're all coming out. Yeah, so That's damn they should. I ain't sitting around. It's, you know, I love Dre, but this ain't the Chronic uh, uh, <laughs> 2000 and Never. This is, okay, 2000 the, the Detox that never right. came out. Yo, Man. so you got that many in the can. Yeah, what's it's, the most amount of songs you knocked out in one day where you just went to a zone? The most I probably ever wrote in a day was about five songs. That's a lot of writing. That is. Damn, like I, I started is. in the middle of the night. I think it was one night I had some some good loving, and uh, <laughs> that helps. And I like pulled the covers back halfway down. Yeah. And just kept looking over at her writing songs. Oh, oh my god, that's but dope. recorded. Um, it might be in the same amount, like you know, four or five songs in a day. That okay. like one day is, they just happen. But on the average, I um I encourage. The guys that work with me, the people that work with me, I'm like, let's hey, let's knock out one good song a day. Yeah. If we're in there, let's knock out something. If we're not going to knock out a, a song, let's take a song that we did a few weeks ago or something and let's make it really good. So that's that's all we do. We just try to make them better, make oh, them better. Who are better. some of the younger artists that you're working with that we should probably be paying attention to? Well, here I got my guy, Radio Bass. Uh, a lot of people in L.A. know Radio Bass. Mm-hmm. He's from the I.E. And then... um. I got a guy that I really like. I've been uh, working with him for a while, and I really want people to hear his music. His name is Holiday. He's out of uh, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the boy sings, raps, plays guitar, drums, whatever, keyboards, makes beats, everything. And it's just, you know, you got um that, you know, you got that talent, that just, just untapped, yeah. like, raw, that raw talent. talent that doesn't, yes. Like, literally, you give, you, if you give him a track and he gives it back to you, it's like, what? Like you could never think of, That's but I, I work with a lot of artists, like a lot of artists. And I'm what I'm doing is, I have a, um, a series of albums coming out, of projects. They don't call them albums anymore, mm-hmm. and it's called the Trunk, the Trunk series. Mm-hmm. And the concept is, I really don't really make music for the radio. Sorry, it's really, okay. We still love you. I really don't make music for the club. I just make it for you to ride around in your car and just bump it like really loud. If you got some a good stereo system, bump that. So, um, the Trunk series is. It's uh, a, a, a volume like one through whatever. I don't know when I'm going to stop because I've probably got about enough material for about 10 right now. And it's each each project has 10 songs on it. I'm on probably like five, half the album. Mm-hmm. And then the, the the rest of it is like the various people that work with me. So I just it's just to shine light on, you know, the, the crew. No, I feel mm-hmm. that. Um, let me go back to your show with uh, with Ray J. What's it called, and where can we see it? Because I want to see this. Because I would love to see you guys on camera with your baby. So I knew you would ask that. Yeah, because I want to. <laughs> as a woman, I want to see it. You know what I mean? So bad. And in my talking points, I've, I'm to, <laughs> I I'm to it. I'm to tell you not the title and not the network because because you're gonna decrease our value if I give you 
if I throw it out right, out there right now. Okay. Like we we're, we're in. Okay, where can we like like uh, start? It'll pop up like late fall, or when can we? It'll it'll definitely be on. We, we're going for like maybe like a female network. Cause okay. All right. Cool. Because okay. it's it's not it's not a male kind of chauvinistic show. It's really showing the vulnerable side of us. Uh, you know. Being dads. Being, yeah. With to daughters though, not just not like. Just like, get out there and play football, son. No, it's, these are daughters. That's a different beast to be in yeah. this business and have a daughter. Oh yeah. Do Whoa. you change diapers? In my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that was a hell of an answer, okay. right there. He was like, "In my mind, I, I visualize how." I can look go. across the room and be like, I, I, "I see what? You, okay, I see what you're doing." Like, yeah. Kind of like rolling a blunt. <laughs> God, I cannot believe this. Yes. <laughs> kind of, right? Kind of. Yes. You got to wrap and seal it. I don't know. Listen, I cannot wait to see that show. And I already know it's going to be a huge success because, yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? Seeing the guys on, on film, especially with their daughters and, and being a dad, it's something that intrigues us all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we're definitely going to be watching that. Is, I, I live life with not a lot of fear, but that scares me. Really? Okay. At least you're honest on that, man. No, yeah. like like Because I've seen my homeboys like talking to their daughters. They're like, Daddy, you don't know that daddy. Like girls get in their daddy's asses. Like mm-hmm. yeah. So I'm like and I already I look at her right now and I'm like, she can say anything she wants to me. I ain't gonna That's it, yeah. Yeah. Like your, your, your son gets talking smack to you like, boy, yo daddy. It's a whole different beat. Yep. But your daughter <laughs> You know my daughter, my my daughter, my dad used to talk really rough to me, but like get in my like face, and, you know, like I whip that ass. But it didn't scare me because I was like, mm, he'll never hit and me, now, and he never did. And now you're his daddy. <laughs> like, my mom was a different story though. They pop you without, yeah, you know man. what I mean. So we fear yeah. mom. Yeah, I got the I got the ear in the back of the, the, the little <laughs> neck right there. Yeah. Oh wow. my god, I can't wait. So to much going out. on. What about the roll up show? Can we speak on that, man? Um, Speak on. I don't. I don't. I don't know much about much, man. I, I, I say let's roll up on this show right now. Let's yeah, roll let's do that. I, I, roll exactly. that. I brought donuts and weed, and I brought bitch buttons. <laughs> this, first of all. <laughs> so you know. I love this. I love this. This was premeditated. Bitch buttons, donuts, and marijuana. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Good morning. You can't make that up, man. Before we even wrap up, I want to talk to you mm-hmm. about the importance of, of K-Day. Um, you know, the first this is the first hip-hop station in the world. It's mm-hmm. very iconic. We mm-hmm. love it. We're so proud of it. Sure, we want to ask you just to speak on how amazing that this station is for the city of L.A. Well, I've, had, I've said this quite a few times. I know. I I've love hearing this. you speak about um, it. Though. If you were there in a time where, you know, hip-hop was not accepted it was not mainstream it was not it was definitely not on the airwaves like radio stations used to have a slogan that was like smooth r&b and no rap <laughs> that was a normal tag wow yeah. no yeah. rap was a normal tag i've never heard that before and that you were saying that so that people would listen to your station like well i can listen here because i'm not going to hear any of that rap stuff so uh k-day in light of all that which was um on am at the time mm-hmm. at 1580 k-day was so powerful in the hip hop community, they decided to play rap 24 hmm. seven, rap music only. And of all that cl- you know, clear FM you could tune into, we were all tuned into AM radio. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And that, that, that to me speaks the volumes of how, how, how powerful it was. Like you, any time, day or night. And then K-Day had all these DJs. They they were out in the community doing events. You know, Greg Mack is like our guy. Yes. Like, like, like Mix liter- Masters, they were out there doing it. Like literally guys like me, I don't think I'd be a popular artist in L.A. right now without K-Day. Like they, they broke us. Yeah. Like no doubt about it. No, I love it. I love it. K Day all day. Let's let's go into your favorite track though. Um, What's my favorite track? Uh, no, oh, yeah. I, want, I want to hear from you. <laughs> Out of all the music we got, K Day, your favorite K Day song. We're gonna jump into it right now. You can't play two short favorite two short song. Yes, I can. It's like boom, 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 boom. Romeo, can we do it? These are the tails. You can't. Ain't no clean version of freaking tails. What? We'll take it and clean it up. It's just gonna go boop. I'm gonna tell you a song that I really like. Um, that means a lot to me. Um, uh, the song I did with E40, uh, the first song we ever did together is called uh, "Rapper's Ball." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is a that's a classic. That's a classic. Yeah, Let's jump into, into it right now. Hey, we'll get do that it. short stick though. Don't trip. Don't cheat yourself on that one. Cheat yourself. Smoke some. Hey, let's go. Oh, wow. Let's K-Day back.